In the heart of Connecticut lies Danbury, a small city that embodies a poignant sadness. Unlike the idyllic charm of small towns or the vibrant energy of big cities, Danbury is marked by faded Victorian houses, vacant lots, and weed-buckled streets. It's a place where drifters roam and desperation lingers in the air, where crime and lost causes are all too common. And at the center of Danbury is Jimmy Gallant, a figure whose reputation is shrouded in ambiguity. Some view him as a mobster, while others see him as a legitimate businessman whose waste removal company has been linked to the Mafia. Described by the New York Times as a Danbury trash hauler suspected of mob ties, Gallant's story reads like a chapter from The Sopranos. Jimmy Gallant's life took an unconventional path for a mobster. Raised in South Salem, New York, and serving in the Air Force, he built a lucrative waste disposal empire, valued at $100 million by 2004. Despite residing in New Fairfield, he was deeply involved in Danbury, earning praises as a philanthropist. However, his past included prison time for tax evasion and allegations of violence to maintain his business dominance. Gallant's penchant for attention-grabbing gestures was evident when he purchased a minor league hockey franchise in 04, housing it at the Danbury Ice Arena. While some may have viewed it as a civic gesture, others viewed it as driven by competitive spirit akin to his ownership of a race car team. Gallant's purchase of the hockey team was motivated at least in part, by his desire to support his son AJ, who had to give up playing hockey due to a severe knee injury. This commitment to his son's passion led Gallant to make impulsive decisions, promising AJ that if he ever bought a hockey team, AJ would run it. True to his word, Gallant made AJ the team's general manager, marking the beginning of their hockey journey in the hockey world. The story of Gallant's team has become a legend in Fairfold Country, resonating with many hockey parents who understand the passion and dedication involved in the sport. For the author, the connection between their own son's hockey experiences and Gallant's story represents a deeper understanding of the hockey community's shared experiences and aspirations. Gallant's acquisition of the Trashers injected a unique blend of the Sopranos into minor league hockey. The United Hockey League UHL, akin to a double-A baseball team, welcomed the Trashers alongside teams like the Quad City Mollards and the Adirondack Frostbite. Named after Gallant's waste management business, the Trashers embraced their identity with the jerseys featuring Scrappy, a garbage can mascot, and AJ Gallant's son and the team's general manager aimed high in recruiting Brent Gretzky, a brother of hockey legend Wayne Gretzky renowned for his talent and name recognition. Despite being in the twilight of his career, Brent Gretzky's prowess in the UHL made him a prized asset for the Trashers. His experience and scoring ability added credibility and excitement to the team, embodying their resilience in the face of adversity. AJ handed the negotiations for Brent Gretzky's contract to his father, Jimmy Gallant. To work around the UHL's salary cap, Gallant created no-show jobs with his companies for players and their spouses, allowing the Trashers to assemble a roster with a reported budget under the cap. However, federal claims suggest that the actual expenditure for the 2004-05 season was around $750,000. The Trashers, under AJ's direction, aimed to be a team known for both skill and physicality, embracing their role as villains. Skillful players like Jim Duhart, known for his scoring ability and fighting prowess, were key additions to the roster. The team comprised players who had faced setbacks in their hockey careers, with many being overlooked in the NHL draft or having brief NHL stints before joining the minor leagues. Mario LaRoque, a former first-round NHL draft pick, exemplified the team's roster. While he was talented, he lacked the qualities to reach the NHL stardom. AJ sourced the Quebec League and HockeyFights.com for tough players with entertainment value. The Trashers boasted notorious enforcers like John Nasty Mirasti and Frank the Animal Bialawas, and this was alongside other skilled tough guys like Brad Wingnut Wingfield, who balanced playmaking with physicality. The team dominated the UHL with their aggressive style, leading the league in penalty minutes while racking up wins. Despite rumors of no-show jobs, players enjoyed their time with the Trashers and appreciated the support from Gallant, who invested in refurbishing the Danbury Ice Arena. The arena's rowdy atmosphere, especially in Section 102, added to the team's mystique. The 2004-05 UHL season coincided when the NHL lockout attracted more NHL-caliber talents to the minor leagues, and further elevating the Trashers' profile. 
the team's success, combined with their colorful characters and AJ's useful leadership, turned them into a hockey sensation and an urban legend. AJ retaliated against the criticism of the Thrashers by recruiting Chad Wagner, a notorious enforcer, to intimidate the Adirondack Frostbite. Wagner's aggressive play led to a brawl, resulting in lifetime suspension from the UHL. Another infamous incident, known as the Broken Leg Game, occurred when Kalamazoo Wings defenseman Josh Elzinga caused Brad Wingnut Wingfield to suffer a severe leg injury. The game descended into chaos, with Ruben Nadour allegedly assaulting a referee and receiving a suspension. During the chaos, team owner Jimmy Gallant clashed with a referee and was arrested for assault, although charges were later dropped. Wiretrap recordings revealed that Gallant attempted to influence the situation by requesting a letter from the referee to absolve him of blame, but the letter was never sent. The Trashers concluded the 2004-05 season with a 44-29-7 record, earning them a spot in the playoffs. Game 2 of the series remains unforgettable for many Trashers players, who consider it a pinnacle of their hockey careers. After two overtimes, the game was still tied and the Trashers found themselves without fresh shirts. However, Danbury fans came to the rescue, offering their own shirts in a show of support. The winning goal finally came in the third overtime, prompting jubilant celebrations among the Trashers. Although they won that series, they were eventually eliminated in the next round, having exhausted their resources. If you're enjoying this video so far, Leave a like and subscribe before we get to the exciting part of the team's story. Unbeknownst to Jimmy and AJ Gallant, a parallel game was unfolding in the FBI office. Agents were conducting an investigation into Gallant's waste management business, prompted by allegations of illegal practices. Wyatt Traps captured incriminating conversations, including discussions about hiring a leg breaker, referees, and a notorious gangster like Manny the Horse, Ian Olio. Assistant U.S. Attorney Michael Gustafson described Gallant as a manipulative and controlling figure. In the summer of 05, federal agents raided Gallant's offices, seizing over $500,000 in cash and thousands of boxes and documents, uncovering evidence of various illegal activities, including the no-show job scheme. Moreover, the investigation revealed that Gallant was making quarterly payments of $30,000 to Matty the Horse the head of the Ghetto V's crime family, as a mob tax to maintain dominance in the trash trade. This unexpected twist drew comparisons to an Elmore Leonard novel. Despite the legal troubles looming, the trashers were determined to kick down the door of success. With a mostly unchanged roster and new additions like David Beauregard, they aimed for victory in the upcoming season. Gallant and AJ taunted opposing teams during warm-ups, jokingly suggesting that they would join the Trashers next year. Their confidence was high, fueled by determination to succeed. The Trashers finished their second season with an impressive record and stormed through the playoffs, reaching the finals. Though they ultimately fell short against Kalamazoo, the season was marked by memorable moments, including Wingnuck's redemption against Josh Elzinga, serving a kind of frontier justice on the ice. Jimmy Gallant was officially arrested on June 9, 2006, shortly after the conclusion of the Trashers' final game of the season. He faced 72 charges, including extortion, witness tempering, and racketeering. Alongside him, Trashers' coach, J. Todd Sterling pleaded guilty to participating in the salary cap fraud. Maddie the Horse, also implicated, spent 18 months in prison but survived, passing away as a free man in August 2012. Gallant himself pleaded guilty to various charges, resulting in the seizure of most of his assets, including the Trashers and his trash companies. He served six years in federal prison. The Trashers folded three days after Gallant's arrest, and while AJ attributed it to changes in the league, Gallant acknowledged the impact of his legal troubles. Perhaps it was for the best, preserving the team's legacy, rather than facing gradual decline. AJ later opened a boxing club, aiming to establish Danbury as a boxing hub akin to Oxnard. Gallant, upon his release in 2014, simply stated that he was enjoying life. The Danbury Arena returned to its original purpose as a youth rink where the author's son now plays regularly. Reflecting on the past, the author sits in section 102, reminiscing about the memorable era of the Trashers. For more NHL content, 
click the video on the screen to watch the craziest meltdowns in NHL history. And comment your thoughts about the godfather of the trashers. Was it too harsh taking down his team? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And see you next time.